whenever we are talking about budgeting, I I told you it is it is planning, but planning of the monetary aspect, as simple as that. So, uh, what is the objective of the session? It is you know uh, to help all of us to make informed decision by you know did. preparing a detailed budget of the business have clarity about the expenses and the revenues uh see this is another another importance of preparing a budget is uh suppose we are about to start we have not started up or even if we have so uh and you you are looking for finance suppose and you want it from the banks for that matter bank would definitely ask you to provide them with a financial statement you know a predicted financial statement obviously you are not into the business right now so you will not be uh, providing them with the real one but then they'll definitely ask you to project your finances for the next say 3 years 5 years time period because they they would be interested in knowing how would you be paying them back right so that is again important over there if you are looking for any sort of finance from anywhere this budgeting becomes very very important because accordingly you will be preparing your uh, you know um, estimated cash flows estimated pl account so they are all estimated why because they are not the real ones they are just the estimated ones but then they have to be worked out and you know planned in a very and calculated in a proper way in order to minimize the risk associated okay uh, what are your expectation from this budgeting session i'll be learning probably how to uh, prepare you know that to prepare the requirements basic requirements before starting a business Mm-hmm. and for that what is the amount i need initial so if i need to invest how much i need to invest and what will be the monthly expense or weekly expense that i have to uh, pr- approximately uh, calculate evaluate and then have it ready so i may not be knowing the exact one but still i need to manipulate whether uh, if i need to you know expand the business so that expanding the business probably the comes later so initial budget for a month i need to prepare a list of things which i need whether i need one space or whether i need one uh, system or exactly. printer or whatever it is for everything exactly yeah. ma'am uh, but what we'll be doing today is a basic budget right uh, how should we start what should, what are the pre uh, preparation kind of pre thinking uh, that we should have before uh, preparing the budget so we'll talk about that and according to each of the businesses that you all might be into you can understand these are the prerequisites you also have to provide for the same right everyone's business will be different so obviously their needs accordingly will differ but more or less the heads will be the same and that is what we are going to discuss about right now right and then might be some day no we can have a workshop under which we can talk about your specific businesses also so uh, i hope most of us have been preparing budget at least for our homes so probably we all are comfortable with budgets i mean at least the uh, you know the superficial parts we are we all have been doing it so i don't think it will be a very very you know complicated thing for us yes uh, because it's a business so our our thoughts should be open wide while we are preparing it right so what is it one of the most important task of a new business owner is to create a budget which people often you know neglect and they should never do that so you can uh, see the expected income and expenses and the need of the cash because how else would you be providing for that much of money until unless you know exactly what is your need like right so a budget is a key component of any any startup any business any any such thing so you have to certainly certainly create a budget if you are not comfortable with it you can hire someone to do it for you right 
so if if you are comfortable you can definitely do it but if you are not you can definitely take the help of there are various people who can help you out with it right and they charge you very less so in that case you can get it done by them but mostly if it is your own venture you know it better you know your business much much more than any third person right so then i think it would be very very wise of you to provide for it in an appropriate manner so in brief since there is no past information this this is what makes your budgeting more complicated to refer to the budget must be created using you know the best guesses on your income and expenses even if the bank financing i just talked about all these things uh, bank finance is required they'll be asking you for a budget they'll be asking you actually for a projected financial statement that is the word that they use they'll be asking you for a projected financial statement for say for i mean generally they ask for 5 years right so one year two year three year because they want to see might be what will be your break even like i hope you all know what break even is the point when you just get when you pay off the money you have spent yes it is it is the point where your expenses and income are just the same nothing more nothing less than that now people might be wondering why is that important yes that is the most important part why because after that no you have covered all your expenses and that is the point from where you will start accelerating actually so every business looks for the bep break even point that is very very important okay now what are the things that you need to pre think i mean before starting so the first thing that has to be kept in mind while you start when you are about to start preparing your budget what all do you need your business to be prepared with when you are going to inaugurate it the very first thing what all should be there in place so what is needed to start the business on the first day so that will include everything that is required right so you have to think about it every little smallest smallest thing should be taken care of over there then once you start it then your working capital comes in so then you will have to think what will be the fixed and the variable cost on a continuing basis then then the next thing that you need to think about is how can you keep your cost low now it can be i mean i've given you an example for example suppose um we are uh, making something for which the platform on which we are making is quite high sometimes it might lead to accident because we are bringing it down putting it up and it might lead to breakage additional cost so obviously thinking about those things you can think of furnitures which would minimize these kind of accidents or uh, you can also think about a few tools and equipments which will help you to handle them carefully so now you have to think about what all can you do to keep the cost what can be expected then another other thing like you know sometimes what happens you know that for uh, for starting your business you need uh, a particular kind of furniture right obviously if you go to buy them it will incur cost now you can think of you know my my parents have this kind of furniture over there will they be ready to donate it to me because we are starting up see it's a startup right so you can definitely think of it if you can get it for free so then you don't have to provide it provide for it in the budget right so you can think of all these things also these are the pre thinking process i mean uh, area so what all can you get as donation from your friends relatives etc i mean i'm not not just talking about money i'm not talking about money i'm talking about all those things that you could have you know um, or you can get from your relatives or friends otherwise for which you will have to invest money 
right so because you will be getting it suppose you know that you will be getting it then you don't have to provide for it in the budget what can we do without this is a very very important thing because we kind of get tempted many a times uh because as i said no the first day we are going to start so then we'll be thinking acha we'll be having a small function where people will be coming and we'll be inviting them for inauguration let us de decorate this in this way <coughs> <coughs> sorry but uh, keeping a startup in mind where the budget is not big investing this extra money might sometimes we be you know uh, a kind of uh, it might have a later impact because you will be spending something on that which might have been or which could have been used in something more important and which will without which you couldn't have you know survived but without those decorations you could have certainly done you could have done something else instead of you know putting your money into it i i'll also talk about various other ways where we can think of saving our money so just think about what all can you do without without compromising with the quality of the production with the quality of the business or the service that you will be providing for if it has an impact on that then obviously yes it is important but if it does not con contribute to it in any ways then you should rethink about it you can think about these decorations and all when you have already you know started making a big profit then you can definitely think of putting your money a part of your money into these things but not initially and then you know it's very correctly said the less you need for your business startup the sooner you start making a profit step 1 as i said plan for day one your business starts up so a startup budget can be broken down actually right from the first day as i said no so you can break it down into four different categories the first day what will you require the facilities suppose you already have a place suppose you you want to do your business from your own home you have a hall there and you want to convert it into your working area so but you require say three uh, a kind of cabinets over there cubicles one or two cubicles you know uh, a a kind of workshop area so you will have to sometimes make walls over there any kind of thing so what will be the cost of doing all these things right what kind of wall do you need over there what kind of you know uh, fixtures you will be requiring so these are all facilities so you have to think about these things ki what are your requirements like so facilities cost fixed assets cost like you 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 will require certain kind of uh, machineries you will require certain kind of suppose you have to buy a particular place right so that is also there now again i'll tell you how you can you know think very wisely over here suppose <coughs> for your business type you require say 1000 square feet of an area now you obviously you will be looking for a good uh, you know that kind of a property where you will be getting that 1000 square feet area so why when you go there no you get to come across a place where uh, you know the dealer might be showing you ma'am see this is 2000 square feet and you will be getting it this is beautiful and obviously you also find it very attractive so you get tempted you get tempted and you invest obviously one, when when we compare 1000 square feet and 2000 square feet 2000 square feet will obviously cost you more but then you got tempted you thought you will never get such kind of a property again and you got tempted and you you took that you know property now why have you taken it for obviously for the business so you could have done with that 1000 square feet but then you invested in 2000 square feet obviously double the money almost so you will think that your investment 
is more yes or no it will give you a feel no suppose you were supposed to invest only 50 uh, 50 lakh rupees now it is 1 crore so you will say that i have invested you know 1 crore rupees for this business in this uh, fixed asset but actually it was not required so the return will be in accordance to the 1000 square feet which was required right so suppose you were you are supposed to get a re, uh, return of say 10% on your investment so that 50 lakh actually was the real investment which was required so your return will be only 5 lakh and even if you have invested 1 crore over there which was not required the return will still be so then you will think that you are not not profitable but the the actual error was where what went wrong over there we we bought double the space we needed yes and and this happens if we are not trained we have not trained our mind into utterly utterly professional requirement of that particular project otherwise you know we will just be thinking like any other person and because this property is really attractive we'll go in to buy it and then we'll get stuck our money will get stuck and it will be really really difficult for us to come out of it because it will reflect in the performance of our business throughout its lifetime because it will always show half of what was expected from the investment so that is the reason why we should always be aware of these things so facility cost should be taken care of fixed asset cost an estimation of whatever is your requirement and whatever is the trend in the market so accordingly you can budget it that way whatever is the uh, you know fixed asset requirement land building machineries you know these are all your fixed assets suppose you are into a business of say um, transportation so then your fixed assets will be uh, you know the fleets the vehicles also so the all these things have to be thought of how many of them will you be requiring things like that so all these things you can think of provide for then the next part is once these are done now everything in place now what will be the raw materials required where will you be getting it from how much will it cost you number one material and it is not only the material that will be the cost that you have to think of can anyone else tell me what else will you be thinking about over here with material the cost of material we all can understand what are the additional things that we need to think about over here our labor our time spent Time and storage for the storage space for the materials exactly that is very very important you know you are suppose buying the product where will you keep it if you keep it anywhere it will get you know either it will deteriorate in its quality keeping something outside or else it will lead to breakage and various kind of you know uh, problems with the material so you cannot afford to do that okay and the second thing is sometimes there are certain materials which you will not be getting in real time suppose your production is going on all of a sudden you see that this material is not there and then when you call up the supplier the supplier says it will take something somewhere around 2 to 3 days so will you shut down your production system then that doesn't happen right so you have to think about it you should always while you are providing for your material you should keep in mind what will be the time taken for you to get the material what will uh, according to the scale of your production what will be the requirement or the quantity of the material which will be required right okay so even if you are able to get it very easily don't you think every time that you will be getting it it will incur certain transportation cost as well so if the if you are saving on the one side uh, the cost of storage the other side it will add up to the transportation cost transportation so you have to <coughs> again think of a quantity 
which will be appropriate in terms of transportation where your transportation cost will be minimum and where your storage cost will also be minimum i mean keeping both the things in mind you know you need not have a very big warehouse kinds but whatever you might be having uh, you will be requiring people for it to take care of loading unloading everything everything nowadays people have robots also but then that also costs you right so everything should be provided for and if you are suppose you are not keeping people in your warehouses to load and unload rather you are keeping robots so that robots have to be provided for in the fixed assets are you getting it so the kind of system that you will be having has to be thought of each step everything in detail not a single thing should be you know left unthought or unprovided for so material and supplies and the other costs incurred along so what are the other costs now we already talked about this what are the other costs day one we are talking about your labor your uh, time your unplanned for cost maybe travel maybe other things uh cover uh and we are talking about uh, the starting up the first day when we'll be starting up so it will incur certain expenses like when you have to register your business it costs you the cost of the business registration right Is that fixed cost mamta uh, that would come on the fixed cost registration no, all that no, would be fixed cost fixed, no we are not talking about fixed cost we are talking what we have provided here for is fixed assets okay this these are the other different costs that we might not have you know provided over there for so that is there then the license sometimes there are certain kind of uh, businesses which require licenses as well certain kind of certificates like uh, no pollution and things like that so oh, everything has to be done in a proper way and everything will incur you certain cost so these things have to be thought of in a proper way the first step every such thing should be provided for this is the first step we are going to start that day we should be ready with many things and whatever is are those things that we should be ready with are or can be categorized into these four categories facility cost fixed assets cost material and supplies related cost and other costs ma'am actually the materials and the supplies we and we are talk about Oh, somebody uh, else is. That you were talking. Uh, you are talking about the working capital part, ma'am. Material uh, and supplies. Yes. Uh, facilities cost is the place, is the space required, right? No, it is uh, the uh, the construction things that you will be. I mean, you you just bought the space, right? But then you have to make it uh, according to your requirements, right? You will be providing for uh, cubicles you will be providing for rooms you will be providing for the working space you will be providing for uh, everything right so that has to be constructed no all those construction things that you will be doing so so the age, the space goes in the fixed assets yes the space will go into the fixed asset and all those works that you will be getting done you know they are facilities uh, cost that is the facilities yes suppose you get you you just got a big hall hmm. so you will be construct constructing it according to your needs right washrooms to be created you know uh, restrooms etc etc so uh, and and the workspace and the cubicles so they, these are all facilities that you will be developing ma'am ma uh, actually when we are talking about the materials uh, cost and all you are telling about the certificates which are needed That no 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 to only when i am going for a large scale right no no i am talking about the certificates which are needed in the fourth category other costs material and supply is different material and supply okay. can be can be uh, various other things like uh, okay. which which can go into the production which can go into uh, our service requirements like in order to provide the service we need those materials and supplies so it can be something like that for example if we have a, a salon a lounge right 
so we we need all those uh, you know makeup products we need all those materials right before the day that we are going to start suppose we have customers we need them right so these they will be termed as uh, materials okay now when it comes to the certificates and all uh, is it necessary that even for a small scale we have to uh, a few things so you all, always have to do even if it is a small scale one you have to okay. register your business right registration okay. is at least something that you need to do license what is the minimum required license license is not required for all sort of business but okay. then uh, but then uh, registration should is a must these days okay you know? so uh, that is always recommended because that will uh, bring you into actually the mainstream people will get to know that you know this kind of a business does exist so it is important for you Ma'am, the GST number and also will come. Yes, yes, ma'am, and GST number. Uh, for that, you have to apply, and it it costs you very less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it doesn't cost. Ah, it doesn't cost you much. But then again, nevertheless, there is a cost. It is a cost incurred. It is there a cost, is a cost incurred. So that that has to be provided for, right? Even those small small expenses, no, actually, when you put them all together. seems to be a big expendi- expenditure so that is why we cannot ignore even the smallest expenditure so that is the reason why we need to provide for huh? yes even the smallest thing that we are doing from home like selling like for my case like painting and all for that also you need to require registration ma'am it is always always uh, said to be like tomorrow if you want to make it big you know you need to be you know proper with all your papers so your trade because you are trading right it is a kind of a trade so uh, earlier you used to have a tin like today also i mean to, uh, if if you are trading in anything so you should get a tin i mean that is trade identification number tin number tin number tin number the tin number so, so that is again you you are you are kind of getting registered with the government right that is why you are getting that trade number <laughs> tomorrow when you will go to any Uh, of your clients they'll definitely look for all these things right so uh, and and they they cost you very less with very less investment but you will be proper into a particular business so if you are into business startup doesn't mean that it is a small business that we have started off with and we can carry on with it because no one actually does a business with just an ob- objective of running it somehow everyone wants to expand it make it big later on right so uh, we should we should actually take the first step very very firmly right so should be prepared with all these things even for uh, the cloud kitchens where you need not go anywhere else for those kind of business also you need to have a food license right Hmm. So that man, even FSSA, I will be required, no, because you are running a cloud yes. kitchen. Yes. So food, FSSA... food license, FSSI license. <coughs> <coughs> These are all the requirements of any food related, food related any, yeah. any food related, anything that we uh, sell to be eaten yes. should have a FSSI certificate. Yes. Should always have it, and it's again, I, I'll tell you again, not very difficult to get it. and with very less uh, money you can i mean very less investment somewhere around 2000 2500 you get it but that makes you it becomes more authentic also you authentic, know authentic legalized yeah. no one can ever say that you know you are doing something illegal yeah so th- these are important things and uh, you should always think of investing into these things because uh, they'll actually determine how far will you go in your future okay so let's move on step 2 estimate the monthly now this is about the working capital what will be your monthly fixed and variable expenses now again you will be thinking uh, uh, what is this fixed and variable expenses see fixed expenses are those expenses which are fixed expenses are those expenses which will be same uh you know Like without rain. without without any connection with the quantum of production or <coughs> the number of customers that you might be having nothing to do with it for an example i'll tell you 
suppose uh, you have rented a place yeah to do your business so that rent will be the same irrespective of whether you are producing or selling or doing any business that month or not and even if you are doing a very big business that month still they'll not say then no this month you have done a lot of business so you'll be paying more rent no one can say that rent is always fixed right it will always remain the same <coughs> even electricity and water charges not necessarily fixed i'll tell you why because uh, electricity will depend upon the consumption that you have right the water charges so, will remain the same Uh, again what kind of production do you have if for your production, if for your production you need uh, yeah. water also so yeah. obviously that will depend upon the kind of production that you are doing so we cannot say that these are uh, yes generally for households even for households i'll say electricity bill is never the same it varies it's never the same it keeps on changing this But month you need some under fixed expenses no salary will come salary will be under fixed expenses yes the salary that you have to pay again wages does not come under fixed expenses mm -hmm. wages is variable because it's on a daily basis sometimes they come yeah, it depends upon see wages are generally done on two basis one is uh, hourly i mean uh, time basis and the second one is piece rate ha uh, piece basis yeah Ta time rate and fees piece, piece rate yes. so again it will depend upon the time suppose somebody uh, is you know working for a longer period of time so obviously the wages will be more that month conversely sub suppose it is piece rate that every piece of you know unit that you produce you will be paid for it accordingly so the more the number of the product more will be the wages and vice versa right so uh, yes i'll talk about it so you can see what all are the fixed expenses rents the utilities phone suppose these days you can see i mean they have all the fixed rates credit card processing fee monthly fee website services suppose you have a website which you have hired so the services fee it will be the same every month every year generally it's annual uh equipment lease payment suppose you have leased your uh, you know machines and um equipments so obviously the lease payment will be the same because it is a kind of an emi kind of a thing no every month you will be having to pay the same rent it is a kind of rent again so equipment lease payments office supplies every month you are getting you know this much of stationery so that is kind of fixed until unless there is a deviation mostly it is fixed dues and subscription of professional publication every month you are getting say four newspapers and a few magazines so it will always cost the same or business loan payments obviously they will be emi so it will always be the same so these are the fixed expenses advertising publicity again you will you might wonder ma'am how how come generally what happens see for advertising no every businesses uh, business provides for a certain amount and you know that is the amount that they'll be spending it on i mean spending on these things otherwise uh, they'll never go beyond it that is always already budgeted the budget is always fixed for advertisement for publicity for promotions so uh, insurance again insurance uh, we all know the premium will be the same professional legal fee employees pay benefits etc Uh, as i said uh, salaries pay that is what we are talking about and um, and various miscellaneous expenses so i hope uh, some clear picture about fixed expenses now what are the variable expenses like we are mailing more this month we are sending more of the uh, you know uh, these newsletters to our customers brochures to our customers obviously our expenses will go high and vice versa commission on sale will depend upon the quantum of sale the sale is more the commission will be more and vice versa production cost again um see for production when we say uh, 
if we are producing more of a product obviously the material required will be more the labor hours required will be more obviously <coughs> and and vice versa if it is less it will be less so these are all uh, variable expenses raw materials the wholesale price of goods or to be resold packaging and shipping ma costs etc yes ma'am the wholesale price of goods to be resold uh, you mean the wholesale price keeps on going up and down yes okay. there are traders also no ma'am it's not only about the production there are traders also who buy goods and then they sell it like when we talk of the um, say uh, a a cloth merchant what do they do they they generally buy it from somewhere else mm -hmm. on wholesale and then they retail it out right so again if they are buying it at higher price obviously they will be selling it at higher price and vice versa right so they will be variable expenses so uh, just like that okay so uh, uh, the third step is estimate your monthly sales now till now we were talking about all our expenses now we have to estimate what can be because ultimately all our expenses will depend upon all our incomes and the income will come from the sale only so we'll have to estimate what will be our monthly sal uh, sales like now this is something which is really really difficult to estimate right because you don't know what sales will be and when it is a new business you i mean it becomes even more more difficult so you might want to do three different things sales production can be a uh, sales projection can be done on three levels when it is the best scenario when you think everything will be according to your thought so then that is the most optimistic estimation so what will be the first year sales like and if it is the first year sales then it can be broken down into you know 12 month sales and in worst condition if everything goes wrong what will be the sale like so that also has to be provided that is the most kind of pessimistic estimation but then you you have to do that also and then something somewhere in between likely scenario where somewhere in between you know so you have to provide for all these three and then you know think about all your expenditure keeping all these three scenarios in mind right so while you are providing that projected cash flows to your bankers also there also you have to provide for all these three categories in the best conditions in the worst condition and if everything is normal so right normal means should, yes we should show only one scenario to the lender and all the three scenarios should be shown to the lender all the three all the three yes because otherwise you know we'll always think of everything good but that doesn't happen we all know that right so the likely scenario you know that like likely thing is the best and they they actually go accordingly okay. according to that but then that projection also has to be there if everything goes right then you know you might be doing wonders so you give all the three sir yes it is always suggested to do so okay and then create a cash flow statement cash flow statement again you would be thinking already i have shown you oh, you know the sales but then you have just shown the quantum of sales what will be your price be you pricing your product at what are your competitors like right and then what will be the credit period that you will be giving to them that all will determine what kind of a cash flow will you be having from <coughs> what sources will you be getting your cash and where all will you be spending them on right so it should be the inflows and the outflows of your business every month under this you can show your projected pl account as well profit and loss account as well right so we'll now be talking about i mean these are the four steps that will actually help you to create your budget 
in the most appropriate manner apart from that we'll be talking about what are the general types of budgets that we prepare for a startup so types of startup budgets that is one year budget generally people provide for one year budget but as i said long duration budgets are also required because in the first year you are never expected to you know cover up all your expenses so that will be good just to start up but then what if things don't go in the right way are you well prepared to still carry on with your business make it good for the next 3 to 5 years because sometimes you know uh, it always uh, i mean it takes some time for a business to actually get known to the people start giving the kind of results that you were looking for it takes some time it sometimes takes 2 3 years time so uh, have you provided for the same in a proper way right for the education business for an example if somebody says that the very first year you will be able to cover up all your expenditure no so it is always said that it will take at least two academic year to get popular when people get to know with results people will start knowing about you right you get a few students and you know next year when they give you exams and the results come in then only the word of mouth will start spreading and then you will start getting you know your students on your own on your name and then it will start showing results so then they say that you should always be prepared with proper finances to back up for at least 2 to 3 years so that your your you know education business actually makes a proper ground so these are the things that are very very important so one year budget yes for your working is good but in order to survive and make it big it is always always suggested to make a long duration budget as well how and where do you see yourself 2 years from now 3 years from now 4 years and 5 years from now and what is <coughs> pardon what is a rolling budget rolling budget means one after another like this year to next year what will it be like okay. so when we go to an investor we have to uh, give them both the budgets the one year as well as the long duration budget the long duration will do i mean one year is not required one year is for your own you know working okay but uh, they will actually be looking for the long duration one because that will give them the actual idea about your business how it is going to perform in future okay. because businesses are always always seen with a future perspective see what are the challenges that you know a startup budget faces or any person who might have budgeted uh, what are the challenges that they might face sometimes you know the cash flows might not be in accordance to what they might have thought because you must understand that whatever revenue you might have thought up thought of is not it's not necessary that it will always generate you the same kind of a revenue sometimes the money can get stuck sometimes it can convert into bad debts bad debts is jahan aapke paise doob jate hain you don't get it back right so you have to keep all these things in mind because aapne to kya socha generally you know in a business it is always said that you should not be over capitalized you, you should not be under capitalized so what do we mean by over capitalization over capitalization means you have invested more money than that was required <coughs> that means that part of money which was not required will remain idle and at the same time that money has incurred some cost for you for example i have borrowed all the money that was required for my business from a bank or from uh, any other source so from wherever i might have you know borrowed it from i have to pay them pay them back number one number two it has come with a cost if i have borrowed it then i have to pay interest on it right if i have got it through say shares if i have this uh, i have kind of you know uh, given away the shares for it then i have to distribute my 
profits as well that is again a cost which is incurred on it now suppose i took that money but i am not doing anything with that money and still i have to pay for the same isn't it a big loss yes so a, a, a business can never be i mean we should ideally never have more than required capital in our business number 2 we cannot have under capital also like if if the capital is less than what is required then our production our services our business will get obstructed just because of the lack of capital right so that also cannot be afforded so we have to be you know appropriately funded so if there is a reduced cash flow that also has to be thought of right when we were budgeting what if you know something gets suppose a machine fails i have to buy a new machine have i provided for it in a proper way number 1 so that you know it, the, all of a sudden it is not a big shock to our capital number 2 if the money suppose we have sold something and the money did not come to us what will happen because our expenditures are associated with it we expected that this money will come from here and then we'll be paying it off and the money did not come so how do i pay it to my clients if uh, sorry if i am not able to pay to them so that will cost me my goodwill right and in a business we cannot afford to you know compromise with our goodwill right so then we have to provide for that also we have all we always have to keep in mind that might be 7 8 to 10% of certain amount <coughs> will get stuck and therefore we should be well provided for with that amount at least to keep our business rolling right deviation from the budget also should be kept in mind if some things do not come exactly in accordance to that so for that we have already provided for the pessimistic part as well so we should be providing somewhere from there also and unexpected expenses like the covid 19 when it cropped in there was no production but there were many firms who were paying their uh, i mean some wages to their employees some salary to i mean a part of salary to their employees so there were certain expenses which people might have never thought of right so these small small kind of expenses unexpected things should also be provided for so the provisions should always be made in a budget so uh, keeping all those things in mind i think if we abide by these things we'll be able to provide for and pr- prepare a proper budget for ourselves and it is a kind of a template or something like you know that how you yes you, you we can definitely give because it. i guess this will be a part of an assignment for sure how to prepare the budget <laughs> yes right i'll I, i'll definitely share it with you all yeah uh, in the office hours i uh, will be sharing it right because this will be an assignment next assignment sure <laughs> yeah that's what i said because we need a template then <laughs> sure sure okay any any other question so when you're pitching basically you then you would have to do give this whole projected figure and all that of very very important very important because that is what will actually support your uh, you know pitching because you you will convince people with your idea but that idea alone will not work till the time it is shown and authenticated with the figures and the figures will always come from here so <laughs> it, it is going to be a tough part challenging not tough you, you have been doing it uh, for your households right but that's different ma'am we don't have to pitch it to anybody we are pitching it to ourselves we <laughs> <laughs> go over budget no, also it's only as we exactly. go exactly <laughs> i am forever going over budget <laughs> are you <laughs> sorry but we are out of time that, that is what that is what you have to learn uh, so what we did today is budgeting of a new business 